I've had a general sense that um, in many ways, uh, the 21st century is paralleling the 20th century um, with the kind of big events year by year up until this one, and we're nearing the quarter century mark. So, you know, the, 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 this century is not quite quarter gone, but, but moving that way. Um, and there are some pretty interesting parallels between the 20th century and the 21st. And, you know, as they say, lightning never strikes twice in the same place. Well, history never repeats itself. But a lot of the general themes and trends do interestingly resurface. I think this is why there's value in reading about ancient Israel in the books of the Samuel, Proverbs, the Kings, the Chronicles, even some of the things that are recorded in the prophetic books, um, because we see big principles of what happens when a nation forsakes the Lord, for example, um, or what happens when a nation turns to the Lord, or what does it look like when a nation ignores the Lord and, you know, the roof falls in, as it were? What does that actually look like? So, um, so there is some value in reviewing history and understanding the big, broad strokes that are there, uh, because I think there are some of these, what we could call them mega themes. But by the way, that's where the word meme comes from, the M-E in mega and the M-E on the end of theme. That's where we get M-E-M-E -M -E or the word meme. It's a mega theme. So the, these memes, these mega themes, uh, they do have an, an interesting and sometimes disquieting pattern of repeating themselves. Some of them repeat only every 400 years. Uh, in general, moves of God and awakenings seem to kind of follow a 400-year cycle. We had a big one in the you know, Protestant Reformation um, roughly 400 years ago. Um, that one started in 1517. So if you added 400 to that, you'd be in the early 20th century. And we had Azusa Street and the, the healing revival of the 20s and so forth. Uh, but in the 1600s, John Calvin and, and others were writing uh, some of the theology that we still run on. Well, here we are in the 2020s. So we may see some kind of a intellectual ferment uh, 400 years later. Some of these run in uh, uh, single century cycles or what in Latin is called a cyclum. And so, you know, we sometimes we need to look 100 years back uh, and then not another 100 years back and then another 100 years back. Sometimes these things run in 40 year cycles, right? We see the cycle of 40 with Moses's life. And he actually had three cycles of 40. He had his first 40 years when he was kind of born, had to be given away, raised as a prince, 40 years in the desert, and then 40 years of leading the congregation in the wilderness. So Jesus had 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, and he didn't even make it to 40 years. Uh, but so, you know, again, so there's no one cycle, but we should become familiarized with what are the cycles that are the common ones, which we see in history. Um, so back to what I was saying, the 21st century seems to be paralleling the 20th century in some interesting and perhaps disquieting ways. And if if that holds true, then it, it's reasonable to believe uh, that, you know, the next probably seven years or so, maybe six, should be a period of relative prosperity. Um, it won't be even everywhere. Uh, that's not to say there won't be recessions, but it should be overall a period of relative prosperity. And in the 1920s, what did we have? It was known as the Roaring Twenties. It was a time of great uh, affluence, maybe excess, uh, wealth increase. Um, the Great Gatsby was written about that era. Uh, Gertrude Stein was living in Paris. Uh, so, you know, there were many things that were going on in the 1920s. It seems in many ways that we're having our own parallel to that in the 2020s, but it all came to an end with the Great Depression. And so as we near the end of the 20s, uh, maybe right around 2030, 2031, maybe as early as 2029, because the, there is maybe about a year's variance between the 20th and the 21st century. It's not always there, but if it's there, it's about a year we might see a pretty rough go of it in the in the 2030s 
as we come out of the 2020s. And so I don't think this is a time for us to say, as the French would, laissez le bon temps rouler, let the good times roll. Um, this is more like Joseph with his seven fat years before the seven lean years came. And I think this is a time for us to be paying off our debts, uh, living frugally, putting money away, maybe not always in cash. That's not necessarily a plug for crypto because <laughs> I think everybody knows what's happened there. But I would say diversify um, into good, solid investments, equities, bonds, precious metals, commodities, maybe a little bit of crypto. Um, but we're kind of in that prosperity period. We want to be good stewards of what the Lord puts into our hands and not get carried away with, oh, wow, look at times are so good. And I just made a gazillion dollars at, you know, whatever it was. I think I'm finally going to go buy that whatever fancy car or, you I know, mean, big vacation house. Paul says, if we have food and raiment therewith, shall we be content? So I, I think we, we need to learn to live frugally and humbly and to store money up for the times when maybe it'll be a lot harder to find money. And um, you'll be glad you had something put away for those lean years when they come. So that's kind of my <clears throat> overall direction. Uh, the other thing I would say, and I was teaching on this in 2020, is if you look at the book of Daniel, there's every reason to believe that as we move beyond the 2030s into the year 2040, somehow that year is going to be very significant. And I've made great pains to say I am specifically not forecasting the return of Christ. Jesus said of the day and hour, no man knows, not even the angels in heaven, only the Father knows. Well, okay, so I am specifically not forecasting the return of Christ. I hope everybody heard me say that. But just for the record, I am specifically not forecasting the return of Jesus in 2040. But I am saying there's likely to be some big eschatological event in 2040. And for this year, 2020, that just ended, there was some debate because um, somebody pointed out that if you if you did the math, math, the math that's implied in Daniel chapter 12 um, and used lunar years rather than solar years, uh, you would actually land in 2022. And so there was some question in my mind. I didn't, I didn't actually think 2022 was the year, but I thought maybe it is a lunar year. And if so, then 2022 is the big year, the big event, uh, whatever this eschatological event is. And again, specifically not saying it's the return of Christ. Could be something like the Armageddon War. Uh, could be something like the Antichrist stands forth. Uh, there could be many things that, you know, go into that, but they're all kind of in scripture. They all are foretold as we think about the end of time. Um, we really had to go through 2022 to see if that something happened. And the only thing that would even be seemingly on that scale is the Ukraine war, but it didn't go nuclear. It didn't become Armageddon. Um, so it's not clear to me that 2022 was that year. Um, so I'm I'm now moving out to the back to the solar year versus lunar year understanding, and it lands qu squarely in 2040. And whatever it is that's going to happen in 2040, it's going to be big and unmistakable. Now that's a long range prediction, and you know we're 17 years away from there. Uh, but I said at the beginning of COVID, it's going to be a rough ride for the next many years. And everybody better buckle up their seatbelts and, and be ready. Uh, the, the world as we've known it has ended. When COVID came, everything changed. COVID, as I called it at the time, was and is the beginning of sorrows. That's what Jesus calls it in, uh, in the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24 and 25. That's what COVID was. But it's the beginning of sorrows, not the end of them. And so there's going to be a time... As Daniel and Jesus both say, a time of distress and hardship unlike any that the world has known from the beginning of the first civilization, the first founding of the cities, um, right up until that time. And so, you know, again, this is a call to be sober, vigilant, alert, prayerful, holy, 
consecrated um, to weigh things, to sift them, to search the scriptures, you know, to draw near to Jesus. This is not a time to get drawn away into dissipation and foolishness. And Jesus even told a parable of 10 virgins that were, you know, basically the, the bridesmaids in a wedding. And he said, you know, five of them were wise and had extra oil for their lamps. And the other five didn't get extra oil. And when the bridegroom was delayed, uh, they were kind of weighed down with all that. And then the, suddenly the shout came, the bridegroom cometh. And the five who didn't bring extra oil were begging the first five, give us some oil. And they said, no, no, then we won't have enough for what we're doing. Go into town and buy the oil yourselves. And so this is really a time, as it were, obviously we're speaking metaphorically and prophetically, to be stocking up oil and to be preparing for um, the inevitability of the bridegroom coming. And again, I'm not saying it's in 2040. I'm just saying it's inevitable that the bridegroom is going to come. And so um, I, I really think there is a call out there for us to realize that in the hard ride that we're, that we're coming into, uh, class five rapids, if you like saying it that way, um, you know, we, we really want to be sober, vigilant, and alert and be ready to address the things of the of the era um, with the idea that when all of that happens, we won't be caught unawares, we won't be count, caught wanting. Instead, we'll be joyful um, that the bridegroom is coming. And, you know, Jesus said, when these things begin to happen, then you should look up and lift up for your redemption is drawing near. And it may be that out of all of that, um, over the next, I don't know if it'll start in 2023, but in the next little bit here, maybe stretching into 24, 25, I think there's going to be a renewed emphasis within the, the church at large on the return of Jesus and that joyful anticipation and not with dread and, oh, what are we going to do? It's more like, no, no, you know, we're his people. He's going to take care of us in the midst of the flood, in the midst of the fire, in the midst of the storm. And, I, and so with that, um, you know, this is really a, a call to joy in the midst of difficulty and sorrow. And for many, that may seem like a contradiction, but it's actually quite scriptural. Oh, that's great. By the way, if anybody wants to hear more about that whole 2040 thing, because I didn't really delve into it, um, I have specific teaching on it um, on our website called The Abomination That Causes Desolation. And uh, you can you can get that teaching at orbisministries.org, and I walk through it in great detail. No, that's perfect. Well, Ken, uh, I know you got places to be, <laughs> and uh, a lot of things going on. Um, thanks for taking time. Thanks for joining us, and uh, thank you all for listening and for all your support. It really helps if you uh, if you share this podcast, if you if you like it, if you rate it. Um, I know we're on all kinds of different platforms, but, uh, yeah, if you find this valuable, um, we'd love for you to share it. And for no other reason than it just helps, helps more people. So, uh, we want to thank you all for your support. And, uh, if you do have questions, if you want us to cover more things, uh, there's an email that they can send it to, uh, right, Ken, it's, it's podcast at yeah, podcast at orbisministries.org send in your questions and we collect them. And, uh, some of you have done that and we haven't gotten to your questions yet, but that doesn't mean they've been forgotten. It just means we haven't gotten to them yet. Yeah. Uh, and we will presently um, address the things that you're asking about because we do want to, we do want to address the things that are on people's minds. Yep. Absolutely. So, all right, man. Well, Ken, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you all for joining us and we'll see you right back here next week. Season four of God is Not a Theory with Kim Fish. We've recently updated the Orbis Ministries app with Ken's free teaching archive. You can click on the link in the description of this podcast to download today.